So I want all of you to open Rhino and Grasshopper. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do the same script again, but very quickly, right? People who have already you done that, I don't want you all of you to do it again. I have done it. I'll do it in the way Amos has done, right? So first of all, what I'm doing is I'm creating this circle, right? Oh, it's not shared. Can everyone else see? Amos, I think. Uh, oh, you also can't see. Okay, give me a second. Oh, Amod, you need to stop sharing your screen so that others can see. Okay. Better? Yep. Okay. Right. Okay. So we have this circle over here. And then what I will do over here is I'll I'll first give out a radius, right? So what I will do is I'll create a number slider. I'll create my number slider from zero to hundred. Let's say I'll keep it as natural numbers, which is okay. And I'll connect my radius over here, right? And right now the radius of circle is zero, so I'm not able to see anything. But as as then when I increase my size of my circle, I am having a circle. And then there's a the next step. What I'll do is I'll just exclude my circle, right? Now for exclusion to take place, you need to give a direction, right? So for example, this is the curve that I have. Just one second. Right, so I have a, my curve over here. Something like this. Now if I want to increase the recurve in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, or this direction, right, I need to specify that, right, as to which direction it needs to exclude my curve, right. In order to do that, I'll, I'll, in order to do that, I need, I'll provide a direction, right. So again, in order to give direction, what I will do over here is, there is something called unit vector who will explain me what is a unit vector physics unit vector anyone what is a unit vector anyone it's fine if you are wrong direction. sorry direction yes okay is so is hmm, perfect so what uh, let's clear some concepts right okay F what is a line segment first of all What is a line segment? Also, before we even discuss line segment, what is a point, first of all? Fast, fast, come on. Okay, so it's a geometry, right? Okay, everything is a geometry, but it is a specific location that has X, Y, and Z coordinate, right? This, we define a point like this, right? It's a... It's absolutely small thing with X, Y, and Z as three coordinates, and it's basically your location, right? If this is the point, what is a line? Who will define line for me? Think, think, think. Yep, perfect. Math definition, right? Collection of points. So basically a line is nothing but collection of very small, small points like this, right? If we zoom enough, something like this, right? How do you draw a line? In order to draw a line, what you do is you have point A over here and you have a point B over here and you join them. And that is how, and that is how you create a line segment, right? Everyone's clear with this? Okay. If this is line segment, what is a ray? Starting at one point and going to 
Okay. There is one. Your definition is ninety percent there. There is one thing that is missing. It starts from a point. It goes to infinity. But there is one thing which is m- missing. Anyone who would want to add that. It has a certain direction. Perfect, right? So direction is very important, right? In array. So you are starting from a point. You are going till infinity, but you have a particular direction in which you go, can go. Otherwise, your ray we it can go in any direction, right? And there are infinite possible directions. What is a vector then? so vector basically is used for knowing let's say you have a point a over here and you have a point b over here so you create a vector like this what vector essentially gives you is it gives you two things a vector has one direction as to what direction you need to go right so for example in order to create a vector what f- you first thing that you do is you create a ray right but you don't want to go till infinity you want to stop somewhere hence it has direction plus it has something called magnitude right as to how far do you want to go in the direction of the ray right that's a vector for you everyone's clear with this much any doubts right okay now a vector with magnitude equals 1 is known as a unit vector right so a unit vector is nothing but just direction right so its magnitude is 1 everyone is clear with this much perfect okay let's proceed then so i need to give direction right so first what i will do is i'll use a component called unit and let's say i want to increase in i want to go extrude it in z direction so i'll use something called unit z right as soon as i connect my unit z you see that it has extruded by this much a very small distance right everyone can see this the reason is because my unit or my magnitude right now is 1 so it has extruded with 1 mm right now what i will do is i'll just copy paste the same number slider again over here and now its magnitude is 88 make sense because i am multiplying a unit vector with so again i don't want to go into lot of details of all of these things but what is a scalar multiplication and what is a vector multiplication ye sab terms sune hue hai kahi pe physics mein right so a scalar multiplication is vector multiplied by magnitude right so a vector multiplied by a number right is a scalar multiplication so what i'm doing is pehle mere paas ac i had a vector which was 0 0 and 1 right because it's it's in z direction on a unit vector and i what i'm doing is i'm multiplying with 88 so the final vector that i have will be 0 0 and 88 is this clear with everyone right so again let's go back to grasshopper and this is what we have right and then what i'm doing is like amod had done i'm just capping the holes So this is the script I have with me. Seems good. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to move this cylinder. Right. So in order to move this cylinder, what component should I use? Anyone would get, want to guess? Move. Right. Okay. So if I type move over here, there are two, three components I have. Right. one is move to a point and the other one is move right we'll just sim- use simple move over here right now what does it want it wants two things right if you hover your mouse over anything you will just g- get an idea of what needs to be done right so this is the base geometry and this is the motion right so it, it basically needs two things a it needs a geometry ki bhai kya cheez ko mujhe move karna hai right it of course needs that so what do i want to move i want to move this component the end product okay so i'm connecting that over here now i need to give motion over here so in order to give motion what i will do is i'll again use a vector right so what does a vector tell you it tells you direction and it also has a magnitude ki kitna move karna hai aur kaun si direction mein move karna hai everyone's good with this much 
Hence, what I will do over here is, I will, I let's say I want to move in x direction. So what I'll do is I'll use something called unit x. And I'll connect it over here. Right, to motion. And then what I'll also do is, I'll copy paste the same number slider. Let's I'll connect it over here. And over here, let me decrease my radius a little, right? So I'll decrease my radius a little. I'll also decrease my height a little. And you see, it this has moved. Right? If I increase this number slider, it's moving more and more. Everyone is clear with this script? Yes or no? Why is it yes, I'll come to that. That's precisely the reason why we are seeing this script right now. But otherwise, are you clear with how the script is working, everyone? Okay. Now, what happens is, by default, in Grasshopper, you see everything on your screen. Right? All the components that you have placed on your canvas, you are seeing it on the screen. Right? So, first of all, you started with a circle. Can you see this green color? Whenever you click on a component, all the components that you can see are in light gray color, which is over here. Any component that you cannot see will be in dark gray color. Right? Okay. So now, because the circle is placed over here, you will see the circle. Right? Then you extrude the circle. Right? But just because you are extruding the circle doesn't mean the original circle goes away. Right? It's still very much there. Is it making sense? It's just that it's just placed in Grasshopper. You haven't taken anything from Grasshopper back to Rhino. Right, you are just seeing the objects which you have placed in Grasshopper on Rhino. You haven't actually placed anything in Rhino. Make sense? So these are all just the instances of the component. Right? Okay. So then what you did was you did you create you did a cap holes. Once you do cap hole, doesn't mean the this component goes away. Right? It's still pretty much there. If you can see, you are seeing this jagged lines over here because there is one geometry on top of other so this geometry and this geometry are overlapping it's that that is why you are having something like this make sense yes or no okay and then we move it but once you but you move it doesn't mean this geometry will go away it's still pretty much there right so grasshopper is a linear way of scripting right so all your older geometries will still be pretty much be there only right now you don't want to see let's say ki i don't want to see the original geometry so what you can do is you can select this and then you can press the scroll you can click on scroll or what you can do is you can right click over here right but i'll use scroll button over here and if you press scroll button over here there is an option over here that you, that says disable preview right what it does is it will hide that particular geometry for you make sense Okay, I don't want to even see this exclusion, so I'll hide even the exclusion. I don't want to even see this circle over here, so I'll hide that also. Right, and now I will only see, again, if you see, you, as, soon as, I, as soon as I do disable preview, it becomes dark gray color, right? That means you are not able to see it. Right, and then I can, I, I'm only seeing my last thing, which is in light gray color, which is the move component. Everyone is fine with this much? Can we proceed? Sure. Okay. Now what I want to do over here is, let's say, I want to make, I want to move first the cube by, let's say 100 units. And in the second step, I want to move it by, let's say 200 units. Make sense? So what I can do over here is, first I'm moving it by 100 units, right? So what I'll do is I'll place 100 over here. Right. And then what I can do is I can copy the same thing. Control C, Control V. I have copied the same thing. And this geometry that I had over here, now I'm moving it by again 100 units. Seems good. So I have moved my original geometry A by 100 units and then this also by 100 units. Everyone is good with this much. Quickly try this out. I'll give you one minute and then we will proceed. See, for the first two sessions, I want your concepts to be very clear, right? Uh, we are not doing anything crazy right now, but, huh. 
can i proceed further yep okay so now what will happen is as soon as i move this this cube over here you see this is moving also with the original one right because if i'm moving my first cube by let's say 50 units right my second cube is moving 100 units further right are you all understanding this is it this is perfectly fine right now if what if i don't want to i i want this to be stable right i want this to be at 200 millimeters always right and i don't want this my this particular cylinder to be dependent on this one in that case what will i do is i'll connect this with the original cube itself and then what i will i do is i'll use a number slider that goes from 0 to 200 and i'll use 200 over here right so i'm what i'm doing is i'm making two instance of the same unit seems good with everyone yep okay now what i can also do is i can just delete both of them and i can connect the same number slider over here also right and the way you do that is by pressing shift if you press shift and connect you can add more than one uh, number sliders right I want all of you to quickly try this. Right. And the reason why something like this works is, and I want all of you to see on my screen for like two minutes, uh, because again, we'll do, we'll dig deep in when we go to data structures, but this is probably the most important thing, right? 90% uh, of your errors, 95% of your errors in Grasshopper will be because you have an issue in data matching right uh, so please understand this well how grasshopper works is grasshopper is like a machine right what happens is you put something you have an input over here right some process happens right let's say ki koi wafer ka plant hai, you give potatoes over here and you get wafers over here right so it's it's something like that right but there is some machine over here basically all the operations happen over here and this is your script basically right you can call it machine you can call it script whatever right but basically you have some input on which multiple operations will take place and then you will have output over here now the way grasshopper works is when you give one number slider let's say 49 over here in my case what will happen is first 49 will pass from the script right and then it will look out for another thing so it will then have 200 and it will take 200 and it will give output accordingly right so what happens is grasshopper is actually computing one thing after the other but again it's so fast that as humans we cannot see one thing happening after the other right it happens in like milliseconds so you see both the objects simultaneously but what is happening is basically it's following a cycle right so first one calculation takes place and then the other calculation takes place seems good with everyone and hence something like this is useful right okay right uh, I should have made another copy for this okay I'll be I'll, up, I'll upload all the scripts uh, on classroom by tonight itself right so I'll call okay now what I want to do is I'll, I'll just hide both of these scripts uh, right or what I can do is if you see if you don't want to run any script what you can do is you can select everything and you can disable it from here right that means these scripts are no longer working right and then if you disable everything will appear like this right basically what you have done is you have disabled the script from working right so for example let's say you have big scripts and you don't want a part of a script to run every time you do some change you can disable it right okay so i've just disabled it and i'll make a copy of it and then i'll enable it again so in order to enable again scroll click and then there is an option over here which is known as enable script 
everyone's good can i proceed further okay now let's say i want to have five copies like this right uh, let's say i want to have first one at 20 uh, i'm doing approximation uh, right i want to have second at 40 and i want to have another one at let's say 60 so i'll make 60 over here Yes, so what I've done over here is I have created like for move and X I also so what I've done is per number slider I only used one component. So first I'm doing this with this and then this operation is happening. Right? They both are connected to the same cap holes. What I've done over here is I've connected directly connected both the number sliders to unit X. But it's giving me the same output. Right? Now what I'm doing in the other last one is I'm connecting multiple number sliders right over here. Right. right. And then it's so every time I connect a new number slider, a copy of it is added, right? Something like this. Right. Now this now what if I say that, okay, I want to have 10 copies of these at an interval of 30 each. Right. Or let's say 50 each. So in that case, what I can do over here is first of all, I'll create a script for it, right? So in order to create something like that, first I'll have to create a series, right? I'll have to create a series of numbers, right? Now, you know, again, like it's the same thing as array. In order to create a series, what you need to do is you need to give a start, right? Okay, what number does your script or what number does your series start with, right? So over here, I'll just use zero, right? I want my series to start with zero, right? Then is the step size. So step size is nothing but interval between two numbers of your series, right? So second number minus the previous number. So over there, what I will do is I'll just use 50, right? Now a quick way of creating a number slider is you can just double click and then write 50 and it will create a number slider with 50. Right. Or if you want to also have minimum maximum, what you can do is you can write zero is less than 50. So 50 will be the original value with which the number slider sla starts and then is less than 100. So what it what this will do is it will create a number slider starting from zero. Its default value will be 50 and its last value, its maximum value will be 100. So what I'm doing is I'm doing zero is less than 63 is less than 100. And if I press enter, you see, I've got a number slider with 63 value, right? And it can go from zero to 100. Okay. So what I'm doing over here is I'll create a number slider that goes from zero to let's say seven to 10. And then you can connect it over here. Right now, if you want to see something like series cannot be visualized in Rhino, right? It's a number. So in order to check all of those things, you can you use something called as panel, right? A yellow color thing that appears like this, right? Okay, so I've connected my panel. I'll connect my panel over here. And you see it gives me numbers, right? 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. Make sense to everyone? I want all of you to quickly do this. I'll give you one minute. Just try this out. Adnan, could you uh, draw out how this series, series logic works in terms of points on a line? Okay, sure. So let's say you are having a series, right? Uh, let's say you are having a line segment. The first number is zero. The second is 50, the third is 100, fourth one is 150, this is 200, right? Now if I tell you that, okay, I want a series that is starting from zero, so you start from here, your interval is this one, right? Or your step size is 50. And then count is how many numbers 
do you go deep into right so let's say if i tell you three your series will be zero fifty and hundred if i give my count as four your series will be zero fifty hundred and one fifty seems good with everyone okay now let's say if let's do some experimentation right so if i change my start from zero then, then i put let's say 13 what will happen is i'll have a series that is starting from 30 the step size so the number between second number and the first one is 50 right so the series i will have is 13 63 113 163 and so on and so forth right something like that if i decrease my count over here i will have less and less numbers right and i can have as many numbers as i want seems good with everyone logically is it working fine okay so what i'll do is i'll again start from zero because uh i want hmm, i'll start from zero and i'll have, I'll have count as 10. Now what I can do over here is I can take this series component and I can attach it to my unit vector over here. So what will it do? It, it will create 10 X vectors. All right. So if I connect my series over here, uh, if I connect my series over here, I will have 10 such cylinders, right? Now, if I increase the step size, it will increase the distance, right? Because I'm increasing the distance between the two numbers. So this is what happens when I increase the step size and this is what happens when I increase the count. Is it clear with everyone? Perfectly. It's easy, right? Okay. Let me know if I am going fast or slow, right? Either case. Now, what I'll do is I want to do another operation on it. Right? I'll just make a copy of it. I'll disable the original one. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I don't want to move it in a particular series, right? I want to move my cylinder randomly. Right? With random distances. In that case, I can use a component which is known as random. Right? Okay. Random needs three things. It first needs a range. Right? What is a range? Range is basically a start number and an end number. Right? So let's say you want to create some random numbers. You need to tell Grasshopper, okay, give me random numbers between this number and this number. That is range for you, right? So in order to give range, what you do is you use a component which is known as construct domain. So domain and range are almost the similar things, right? Uh, you use construct domain. Now there are three types of construct domain that you have. You have simple construct domain, you have construct domain square and you uh, and you have this one, right? So the construct domain square works if you have two dimensional data, right? Like you have, you want to create a number, you want to have two points and then your range one is zero and hundred and your range two is zero to 200. Let's say, I'll give you an example so that it's clear. You want to create a point, right? And you want to have X and Y vectors. So the range for X is zero to hundred and the range for Y is hundred to 200. In this scenario, you will use construct domain square because it generates two numbers for you at a time. In our case, we just want one number at a time, right? So we'll use a normal construct domain. Right, okay. So this is construct domain for you. Now my domain starts. So what is my minimum number I want to have? I want to have, I want to have my minimum number is let's say 100. And let's say my domain end, I want it as 500. Right, so I want to generate random numbers between 0 to 500. Okay. Now, the second thing it is asking me is, how many numbers do you want to generate? So between 0 and 500, how many random numbers do you want from me? 
right so let's say i want to have 10 random numbers so what i'll do is i'll use an input of 10 over here seems good with everyone right and if i connect a panel over here again a shortcut for creating panel is either you can write panel over here or you can use two forward slash and it will quickly create a panel for you seems good with everyone okay and if i connect my panel over here are you seeing i am having 10 numbers which are randomly which are random in nature yep so it's generating random number for me, right? What is seed then? So seed, basically, if you want to understand, there is no, again, uh, I don't want to fall into deep of it, but again, computers are not creative, right? Uh, they cannot think of truly random numbers, right? Uh, so they, all, they you always need to feed something in it, right? So these random numbers that you are seeing are actually coded right so there will be one one series which will be like let's say i want to generate random numbers between 0 and 10 so i will have 2 4 6 10 8 3 something like this then there is second random number there is second series right 3 7 8 4 2 7 right then there is third set of uh, the series i have 4 6 two one nine eight something like that right so there are multiple of these series which are already embedded into the software itself when you put a seed value let's say i'll use a sweet seed value of 21 what happens is you are selecting that particular th iteration which was encoded into it making sense right so now when i change my seed value you'll see that these random numbers are changing right if you see are you able to see if i change the seed value these random numbers are changing right that's because my random numbers will be still be between 0 and 500 it will still produce 10 numbers only but it's just that their pattern is changing or the way they are created is changing right so then what I can do over here is I can connect these random numbers to the X unit and it will create 10 random X units for me. And then I will have Q, uh, cylinders like these, right? Seems good with everyone? Perfectly clear? Okay, can we shift gears? Can we move to the next thing? Now over here, one of the problems I'm facing is that these cylinders are overlapping. I don't want them to overlap. What can I do? Anyone? I don't want you, I don't want you to know the script, but let's say mathematically, if you can just explain me, what can you do? I still want them to be at a random distance, right? But I don't want them to overlap. At no cost should they overlap. We can specify a minimum and a maximum distance between two cylinders. Yes, okay, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll change my domain start from let's say zero to over here the radius I'm using is nineteen. Right, so I'll keep my domain start as nineteen or if it's nineteen I'll keep it as twenty, let's say. Right? Didn't work. Right, why didn't it work? Amod, you only look at your script and explain me why didn't it work. The reason why it didn't work was, okay. So what am I telling it? And look at my screen for like two minutes and you'll understand. What I told it was to generate random numbers between 40, between 40 and 500. Let's say my first random number that was generated was 46. Is 46 between 40 and 500? 
yes and so this number is very much possible to be generated right let's say my second number was 53 D does it s satisfy this condition yes but both of these cylinders will overlap right so it didn't work are you all understanding the logic of it see uh, to understand the logic is more important right what is the other way so this clearly didn't work okay what could be the other way anyone what i will do is let's say i'll keep this what i will do is first of all i want to move my first of all what i'll do is i'll just co i just copied the series right so right now the radius is 19 so over here what i will do is i'll use 40 right because the diameter is for twice the radius so the distance between the two cylinders should be at least be equal to the diameter see yes or no okay so i'll keep 40 over here so right now each cylinder is moving with a distance of 40 right seems good with everyone yes or no i'm seeing some confused faces right okay and then what i will do is i will add something what i will do is i'll add something and that addition i'll add as a random number and then i will connect it over here right just give me a second and that random number will be between 0 and I'll increase this to 100 over here and this I can like this right oh, something like this so how did it work okay let me explain you graphically first First what I did was I had this original circle with me I'm drawing it in plan. As a first step what I did was I moved it with a series. So each circle had a distance of 80 between them. Right? Like this. This much is good with everyone. Then to this 80 number, what I did was I added a random number. Right? So what happens is, let's say the first cube will move 80 plus something x1. Right? The second will move 80 plus x2, which is a random number. This will move by 80 plus some x3, which is a random number. Hence what will happen is they will never overlap because there is at least a distance of 80 between them. Make sense? Yes or no? Right? But then there is always this random number that is added on top of it. So what I have done over here is, first I am generating a series. Then I am generating some random numbers, right? So just look at my screen for like one minute. So what I did was I have this series with me. Right? Then as another step, what I have with me is this random numbers. And then what I do is I just use a component which is known as addition. And what I do is I add them. So what I did was 100 plus 13 is equal to 103. Right? 151 plus 7.81 is equal to 158.81. Right? And I'm using this addition as my x vector. Everyone's clear? Okay. I'll just maximize this script uh, and then I want all of you to quickly do this, right? At least try and do this one script with me, right? So that is everything. I'll give you time if you want.
I have this with me, uh, right? What I can do over here is, what I can do over here is, see, I have applied, I have applied an exclusion of 21 to all of these, right? So if I increase the height, all of them increase the height. Now what I can do over here is I can delete this number slider and then again I can use a random right component and then what will I have as a range? I'll have my range let's say I'll use construct domain again right and I'll have my range from let's say 0 to let's say 50 right and then how many numbers right this numbers will dictate how many cylinders I want yes or no yep so what you do is your number of cylinders over here should be same as this count over here right so for example if you are having 10 cylinders over here right that means you'll be having you want 10 different heights that means you want 10 different distances so what you can do as a matter of fact is connect the same number slider everywhere to random number to series and to random over here so that if you change this number slider everything changes simultaneously right so that there is no confusion of data anywhere making sense or not then I can connect this over here. So I'm having different heights. Is it making sense? Or is it getting complex? So this is one part of the script. I'll, I'll group things so this is one part of the script right this is another part of the script a totally different part of the script this is another part of the script this is another part of the script And this is the last part. Right, so what am I doing? Right, uh, first of all, I'm creating a circle. Then I'm moving, I'm having different radiuses, right, for exclusions. Right, 10 different exclusions for the same circle. So if you see what is happening is, I'll, I'll just show it to you, give me a second. Okay, let's start with this small thing, right? I have created a circle. I want everyone to look on my screen, if you, especially if you have not understood the script, and then, okay. So I have created a circle, right? I am excluding the circle. But if, are you seeing multiple cylinders over here? Overlapping on one another? That's because I am excluding it with 10 numbers. Between 0 and 50 and random numbers. So there are 10 cylinders which are created with different exclusions. As I'm at next step, uh, what I'm doing is I'm capping all of them. Then these 10 cylinders that I had, I'm first creating a series for them, for them to move. Right, with how many count, what is my count? My count is again the same number slider. Right, Bec the reason why I've connected it with the name number, st number slider is because if I'm having 10 exclusions, that means I'm having 10 cylinders. That means I want to have 10 numbers in my series so that each of them get a particular distance right yes or no and then i'm also generating 10 random numbers that i'm adding it to the series and then i'm creating an addition and then moving them right it's simple maths right let me know if there is any confusion otherwise i want to quickly complete i want all of you to quickly complete the script and then we can proceed further Mm -hmm. uh, randomization and the single numbers 
everywhere. Yes. So again, Amod, uh, what I'm doing is I'm connecting. I'm using ten as a number over here. So it's generating ten random numbers. Yeah. Because it's generating ten random numbers, it it is having. I am getting ten different cylinders with different exclusions. Yes. So now the reason why I'm connecting the same number slider to series also over here is let's say if I am not having, I'm not creating a series over here. Uh, yeah. I'm connecting this count over here. Right, the same number. Right. Let's say if I do nine. Oh, let's say if by mistake I turned it nine. Then let's say uh, right now I remember that I need to change over here as well. Right. 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 But later on, if I open this script, I might forget. Yeah. Then in that case, it makes sense that if I connect the same number slider over here, so that what happens is if I have nine cylinders. I, if I have nine exclusions, there means there will be that means that there will be nine cylinders, and if I have nine cylinders, I need a series of nine numbers to move them. Hence, I have connected it to the same number. If I have a series of nine numbers, that means I need to also have nine numbers, nine random numbers that I can add to my series. Hence, again the names same number slider. So that if I only change one number slider, everything is changed. Hmm. Forget this. Right, let's forget this. Even if you are understanding this much, it's more than fine. Right. So I'm having nine exclusions, and I'm a, I am having a series of nine numbers that I I'd want to move my cylinders with. And if I change the number of exclusions, that I'm also changing the number of numbers in my series. So yeah. that my number of exclusions and my number in my series is same. Yeah. I don't want to have that confusion of let's say nine numbers over here and ten numbers over here or eleven over here and twenty something over there, right? Because there is, if I am having only ten cylinders, there is no point of generating twenty in my series, twenty numbers in my series. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. That's the only reason why I'm using same number slider at the both the places. Okay. Perfect. Can I proceed? Everyone's good. Okay. Now let's see some of the things in our interface, right? Uh, so basically, what you are seeing on my screen is Grasshopper interface, right? On top, you have some things as to how you whether you want to create a new file, folder, save everything, right? Typically. Things that you have in all the softwares, right? All of these things we'll keep it for the later on. But in display, these three things are important, right? First is draw icons. So there are multiple ways in which you can see your Grasshopper components. If I see, if I click on draw icons, it will have, it will give me icons, right? If I unclick that, it will have these names over here, right? Uh, what I like to use is I like to use icons. The reason why I like to icon icons is because they are much more explanatory than the words itself, right? So if you if I just see the icon, I can see this icon and I automatically know that okay, it's going to create a domain with starting number and the end number, right? If I see this, I hold I know that I'm I need to create a circle with a radius and a plane, right? Center and a radius basically. If I see this icon over here, I know that it is it it will help me to exclude a cow. Right. So that's why I like to use icons. The other thing that you have is you have this draw full names component. If you turn this off, you will have only short forms over here. I always like to use full names, right, uh, wherever possible, so that I don't have to hover my mouse over the thing and read or something like that, right. And draw fancy wires, I would like all of you to keep it on. We'll see what draw fancy wires are when we do data matching, right? But for now, I want all of you to keep this on, right? Okay. Now, what happens is Grasshopper script, it will continuously, it's reloading itself, right? Hence, it is able to know if you are making any changes to the script, right? So it will play, it will again compute, it will again compute, and multiple computations are happening uh, at the back, right?
if you want to stop these computations what you can do is you can right click and there is something over here which is known as lock solver so as soon as soon as you put lock solver you will get a red color boundary that means that any changes you make to your grasshopper are not in editing let's see if i have lock solver over here if i change the radius you see the radius is not changing because the solver is locked right now what you can do is you can right click and you can recompute what recompute will do is it will just do one iteration and then again stop right so i can recompute and it has changed the radius but again if i edit my radius over here it will not edit seems good with everyone or else what you can do is you can remove lock solver and then it will again continuously edit right it it's again replaying right everything right so that's lock solver and all all of that right over here you see multiple buckets with you right by default this is a red bucket what a red bucket represents is if red bucket is on what it represents is as i had said your light gray color components will be seen on the screen in rhino your dark gray color which you have turned off will not be seen seems good right the green bucket what it will do is just give me a second i need to turn it i need to turn some things off right so basically uh, radius i need to decrease ah right over here right so what i'm seeing is all the things that are in my light gray color i'm seeing it on my screen if i click on this it's appearing in green color right this is what red bucket does for you if your green bucket is on you it means you will be seeing nothing on your screen except the things that you click on doesn't matter if the thing is hidden or it's seen doesn't matter if it's in light gray color or dark gray color if you click on it you'll be seeing it that's green bucket for you all right seems good with everyone okay over here you have commands which you have recently used right and over here you have a navigator what navigator does is basically let's say ki aapne bahut zoom in zoom out kar liya hai this navigator helps you to point out at a place where your script is right so if my script is on the top i know that i need to move up right generally used for big scripts is it good okay we'll take a quick 5 minute break and then i'll start again right if you want coffee or something quickly get it last script yes okay. yes yes
okay so what i'll do is i'll create a new file from new document over here right that means that it will open another instance of grasshopper if you want to check out your old other in other ones you can just click over here and it will still have the older one over here right so if you want to just shift between new grasshopper file right okay so now what again i'm doing is i'll again quickly create a cylinder because that's the geometry that we want to use it for today uh, i'll use a radius of let's say 50 uh, and yep i'll use the length of let's say 20 yep and then i will cap it But this time what I'll do is I'll use something called array, right? So I'll, there are multiple arrays that you have. You have linear array, you have rectangular array, everything, right? I'll use linear array for now. Right, if you don't get any command, just type this, right? That's appearing on the top and you'll get it. Right, so uh, it has created a linear array. Now, <coughs> over here, it wants a direction, right? Basically, a distance between two cylinders in a particular direction. So what I'll do is I'll use again X component over here. And then my radius I've kept, let's say I'll keep it as 10. So my minimum distance should be 20. And over here, I'll keep it as 25. Right, okay, so 25 over here. right like this and then I'll hide everything else and then count by default is 10 let's I'll keep it as 11 so that I have 11 cylinders with me seems good is everyone done now let's say you are let's say you have zoomed in a lot or something like that right if you want to see this geometry in Rhino, what you can do is you can click on this component and if you right click on your canvas, there is an option over here which is known as zoom and if you do zoom, it will do zoom extends in your Rhino. Right. Now, whatever geometry that you are seeing right now is just there in Grasshopper and you are seeing just the preview of it in Rhino. If you want to take something from Rhino to Grasshopper, what you can do is you can right click on that particular component and the output right so here over here you want to take geometry from here into rhino what you do is you right click over here and there is an option over here which is known as bake what bake means is you are transferring that particular geometry from rhino to grasshopper from grasshopper to rhino right so if i click on bake a pop-up pop window will open right and over here i'm only having a default value otherwise you will have multiple layers right and you can select any layer that you want to bake your geometry into let's say over here right now i'm selecting only layers and then if you want to change color of the whatever you're baking you can change your color from here or something like that and let's say if you want to group it right so that you want to bake something as a group you can tick tick mark over here otherwise you can leave it like that only and then if you click ok and let me go to my shaded view Right, I'll click, unclick this. Right, you see, my geometries have been baked into Rhino. Right, I want all of you to try this quickly and then we'll proceed. Can we proceed? Okay, so that is that, right? I have my linear geometry over here. I'll delete just now everything from Rhino. I don't want to, I don't need them. I'll keep only things that are there in my grasshopper, right? And I have these. Now the thing that we want to see as the next step is that I want to see under, see over here you have multiple menus over here, right? With you, <coughs> you have params over here, right? Uh, params are basically anything that you take in order to select something from grasshopper to rhino, right? 
for example let's say i want to take a b rep from my rhino let's say first of all i'm baking this right so i can bake this in rhino and if i want to take something from rhino into grasshopper what i can do is i can take this param and i can right click over here and i can do select one b rep or i can select multiple b reps so let's say if i'm selecting one b rep i can select this particular b rep seems good yes or no no but you missed something yep okay Let's say I have a box with me. I want to take this box into my grasshopper so that I can do some sort of it, uh, operation on it. In that case, what I can do over here is I can right click over here and then I can do set one B rep over here. And as soon as I set do set one B rep over here, let's say first I'll remove it. Right? Uh, you have this cube. If you do set one B rep over here. uh you can go to rhino and select a particular b rep and now this b rep has been taken into grasshopper right the original b rep will still remain as it is in rhino but what grasshopper is doing is it's just creating an instance of that cube right can i proceed so basically here are your params right and then uh, there are other things but we'll leave it as it all your math components will be over here so you have creation of domains you have matrices you have operations you have polynomials over here if you want basic scripting and expressions over here and all of those things right all your components related to set will be over here but for but but yes i understood your question but for example let's say you are creating this curve like this right yeah. if i take this curve inside my rhino a uh, grasshopper so what i can do is i can set one curve and now this curve is inside grasshopper Yes. So again, there are various params over here. Uh, if you go to params over here, there is something called B rep. There is called something called surface. There is something called geometry. What is difference between all of these? We'll see tomorrow. Right. The first thing. Uh, so basically, it's a Venn diagram. Uh, I just because you asked, I'll quickly explain it. Uh,
right so it's a more or less a venn diagram right so if you have something like this everything at the end of the day is geometry right inside geometry you have something called b wrap now a b wrap is boundary representational surface which basically in short means that it's either it's it is a bidirectional surface right so there is a curve in one direction and there in there is a curve in other direction also so a sphere like a, that right now inside this b wrap there is something called surface so every surface is a b wrap but all b wraps are not surfaces every surface is a geometry but all geometries are not surfaces right so that's the dis distinction between three of these other uh, other everything uh, i think they are more or less clear right uh, surface box field and all of that right so yes we have these with us right now the thing that we want to start with today is sets right under sets you have multiple of these right so let's see first one right so i have my 10 cylinders over here the first component that we want to see is known as list item right and now what i will do is if i click on list item over here it's giving me only green color over here in on one of the cylinders right that means this cylinder is the output of this component what list item does is if i connect my panel over here you see there are it's telling me that there are 10 closed b wraps that i am having right this over here that you see this thing over here is known as a list is everyone good with this okay so what list item is doing over here is what list item is doing over here is it's basically selecting the first because the index is zero what it is doing is it's giving me the first item from my list seems good with everyone let's say i'm connecting a number slider over here from 0 to 10 now over here my item that i have selected is the zeroth item in my list everything in computation starts from 0 and not 1 right so basically is my zeroth item is my first item and then if i increase my number slider it's selecting now the first item then thus it's giving me the second item third item fourth item fifth item right So let's say if somebody tells you okay, okay scale the seventh item for me you can use a list item right so for example let's say you i want to just move this seventh cylinder what i can do is i can use my list item select the seventh item and then let's say i want to move it so i'll quickly move it in let's say y direction so i'll use unit y and then i'll move it by let's say 20 units right so i have moved my y by 20 units make sense my seventh it is now if i change my uh, list item over here it will go like this right because i am selecting that particular item from my list and it's moving that particular item seems good for everyone can i proceed okay now if you Uh, again uh, as i had explained sir uh, what happens is basically when you move something the original instance also stays there only like you also see the original instance what you can do is you can hide this and then you will only see the only thing that is but only thing that's not hidden but otherwise in grasshopper there will always there be an instance okay that is what uh, you were asking yes yes that's the same thing that you were asking okay So there is nothing like move and copy. Uh, they are not two different things. Even if you want to copy something, you use move only. Right. Okay. Can I proceed further? Right. Okay. So then, if you zoom into enough, if you zoom in enough on your list component, there is an there is some you'll see two plus signs over here. 
right? I want all of you to just see on my screen for one minute and then you can try it on your own. If you see this plus sign over here, so if I click on that plus sign, there is one more component that's added over here. What this means is, this means i plus one. What is i? i is the index. Right. So my i will give me ninth item in my list. My i plus one will give me tenth item in my list. Right. So if I just copy the same thing, let's say if I copy the same thing again, but if then I'm connecting this one to i plus one, right, it's giving me this is my i and this is my i plus one. And now if I change the value of index, you see it's working like this. Make sense for everyone? Yes or no? Right, if this is i plus one, a top one will give me i minus one, right? So this is list item for you. There is another thing over here, which is known as, we'll see both of them, we'll see li split list, and then we'll see partition list, right? Uh, and then we'll see, okay, let's see only these two right now. What split list does is, it, as the name suggests, and as the icon you can see, it will split your list into two parts, right? So what I'm doing over here is I'm connecting my geometry or I'm connecting my list and let's say I want to split my list at number five. Let's say if I split my list over here like this and then what will I do? I'll, I'll just attach a B rep over here so that I can click on it and check. Right, so if you see over here, it has split my list into two parts. Right, this is my list A and this is my list B. Seems good with everyone? It has basically split your list into two parts. Anyone having any other issue? Can I proceed? Okay. So yes, that is list item that we have with us, right? Now let's see another example. Right, I'm having partition list over here. What partition li list allows you to do is, it allows you to create partition of your list into different, different sizes right so for example let's say i want partitions of let's say five items 
so what it does is basically if you hover your mouse over here and i'll connect the panel over here it basically connect creates two this right because there were 11 items i'll create 10 items so that it's divisible but it creates basically two chunks right something like this you can then have partitions of let's say three so what it will do is it will four so basically what it will do is it will take first four items second four item and the remaining item seems good with everyone uh, could you draw out this particular one the partition list how how pictorially it can easily so basically if uh, there are 10 items 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and if my if I give my chunks as three, so what it will do is it will first select this three, then it will select this three and create a group, then it will select this three and then remaining one. Something like that. Right? What? So this is partition list. What the earlier the earlier thing did was split list. What it did was it splits your list. So let's say if you give integer as four. It will take integer as 4 and it will just split the list. So everything before 4 is 1 and everything after 4 is another. Can we proceed further? Okay. Now that we have covered some of these list items, what I want to do is I want to show you some cull items. Right. So, okay. Let's say we have this with us. Uh, right and then okay I'll just start the script on and then I have this right now over here I have something called cull index the first item right or you can what you can do is you can double click and write cull index what cull index does is basically I'll hide this off I'll hide everything off right and I'll give an index of let's say 0 to 10 So basically what cull index does is it culls your that particular item from your list. What cull means is cull is equivalent to delete. Right? Removing something basically. So right now I have removed the zeroth item from my list. Right now I am removing the first item from my list. Second, third, fourth, fifth, something like this. Make sense? Is everyone clear with this much? Can I proceed further? okay yes so this is basically cull index then you have cull nth what cull nth does basically right i'll delete this cull nth what it does is it deletes the nth right so for example, let's say I give 2 as an input, what it will do is it will delete every second cylinder. Right, so if I, I just need to hide all of these, disable them, but yes, so basically, curl nth, what it does is it deletes every second cylinder, right, so it kept first, it deleted second, kept second, deleted third, fourth, fifth, delete, right. Make sense? If I give 3 over here, what it will do is it will delete every third cylinder. This is curl nth for you. Seems good with everyone? Can I proceed? Okay. And then over here, we can do cull pattern. What cull pattern does is basically it deletes your cylinders in a particular pattern, right? So if you right click on cull pattern and if you set over here, set multiple boolean, what you'll see is something like false, false, true, true. This is the default value. So what it does is the first two items will not be deleted because it's the first two items will be deleted, right? Because it's false, false, right? True, true means it will keep that item. 
right so it deletes the first two keeps the other two deletes again the next two keeps the next two right so it's something like that right you can have any pattern over here if you want so for example let's say if i use only true false what it will do is it will delete the first keep the second delete the third keep fourth make sense right if i do over here if i right click over here and if i do false true and then let's say true again like this what it will do is it will delete the first keep the two delete the this one keep the two you ever even clear with this perfect can i proceed further okay and the last one that we want to see for today is something known as random reduce what random reduce does is basically over here random reduce component random reduce component you'll find it over here right under set sequence and right so basically random reduce so what random reduce does is it randomly reduces your items right so it, it will delete some items for your from your list randomly right hence the name random reduce so for example you connect your list over here and then reduction so how many items do you want to reduce so let's say if i want to reduce three items so it will delete three items from my list of 10 cylinders seems good right again what i can do over here is there is seeding over here as well so if i change the seeding the cube which is the cylinder which is deleted will keep changing right something like this everyone's good with this much can we proceed further right so what now we are going to do is we are going to see a practical uh, implementation of whatever we have learned in a very very simple form of uh, in a very very simple script right this is the first day we are doing grasshopper and i'll try and keep things as simple as i can let's see right so first of all let's say what i want to do is i want to create a parametric geometrical pattern for a wall for interior let's say right uh, so some sort of random things or something like that happening right so first of all what i'll do is i'll start with a rectangle right now let's say size of my room or size of my wall so basically my room is uh, let's say uh, how much should i keep let's say it's 6 meters in length so i'll use 6 6000 over here right and my height of my room is let's say 3200 so i'll keep that over here right so this is a rectangle that i have with me now by default the value of plane is always xy right but i want it vertically right because it's wall and not a surface or something so what i'll do is i'll use xy i'll use yz plane over here so what i will do is i'll type yz and yz plane will come up right so i can insert yz plane over here and as soon as i insert yz plane over here my orientation has changed of my cylinder right stop me wherever you don't understand something right is everyone clear with this much can i proceed further okay is an e sort of yes So basically, on which plane do you want to draw this rectangle? So I want to draw it on yz plane. So there are different planes you can draw. Yes, 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 yes. You can you can also use xz plane. So for example, if I use xz plane, uh, it has shifted to xz plane, right? Right. So you can have any plane you want. Right. Yes, yes. Good. Hmm. uh so for example over here you have something called base right so if you hover your mouse over here it's showing world xy you can also input world yz over here so basically y is a plane over here right uh, for a circle also you will have the same thing so it's all more of a than not it's there only so if you are starting out with a circle 
you will still have a plane over here. So yes, grasshopper sometimes acts funny. It has uh, different names for the same thing like base over here and plane over here, right? But it would be there. Just hover your mouse and it might be there, right? Okay. Okay. So you have this curve over here. Now, as the next step, what I want to do is I'll pass this curve to a surface param. What the surface param will, will do is it's smart enough to take the boundary and create a surface for me from this rectangle. Right. Everyone's good with this much. Can I proceed further? Sure. Okay. Okay. Now I want to explain your concept. The concept of dividing domains. Right. So in grasshopper, what you do is usually, let's say you are having a surface like this. Day before yesterday, I explained the concept of U and UV. Right? And W. Right? So for example, let's say if somebody asks you, I want to divide this surface into 10 equal parts, horizontally and vertically. So in grasshopper, typically how you do is there is something called domain start and there is something called domain end, right? So your starting position and end position, right? Now what you do is you divide your domain into 10 parts. And then along those parts, you divide your surface. Is it clear? So this domain end and domain start, you need to know, right? Okay. Domain start and domain end is different from starting point and ending point, right? So basically, if you want to, let's say, divide this curve, if you just take these two points and if you divide them, what will happen is it will construct a line and it will divide a line. You don't want that to happen. You want divisions along this curve only. Hence, a new concept like U and V, we are not using X and Y, right? Hence, a new concept like domain start and domain end is used over here, right? Now, let's get back to grasshopper. So, we have this surface with us, right? I want to divide this surface, okay? I have this surface with me. So, in order to divide this domain, I have a component over here which is called as isotrim. What isotrim does is isotrim allows you to isotrim will allow you to divide your surface. Right? But in order for it to work, you need to give it a domain where it needs to place those divisions. Right? So for that, there is something over here which is known as divide domain. And because I'm using a surface, I'll use divide domain square. Again, remember, it has X and Y. Surface is two dimensional data. So we'll use divide domain square. Works? Understood? Now what I need to do is I need to connect this surface over here. Right, so as soon as I connect my surface over here, it will take that domain from that surface. And then I need to give U count and V count. So basically how many divisions I want in U count, let's say I want 20 divisions in U count and then I can have same number of, let's say I'll have more in V direction, right? So let's say I'll have 50 in V. And then I'll connect it over here. So that I have something like this. Right, and then uh, this is too much. I'll reduce this. I want more or less squares, something like this, and then I'll hide this. I'll hide everything else, right? So basically, I'm having a grid like this. Seems good. Okay, so yep, have little, like, don't have very few uh, of these divisions, have a bunch of them, right? Can I proceed further? Right, okay. Yes, yes, I'm not uh, giving you some. <laughs> okay, so yes. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, yes. 
so i have i'm having this surface right now what what i want to do is i have this surface is with me now i want to do some operations on this surface right but before i do some operations on this surface what i'll do is first i want to extract the edges so in order to do that what what i will do is let's say i'm not doing that uh, that that will get complex what i want to do is i want to scale all of them so in order to scale all of them what i'll do is i'll use a component called scale right and i want all of you to just see on my screen for one minute and then i'll allow you i'll give you time to do it right so i'll use this scale component and i'll connect all my surfaces to my as geometry and now over here i have a scale factor right so scale factor by default is 0.5 so it will try and reduce the scale into half of it so what i will do over here is i'll create a number slider from 0 to let's say 0 0.01 and to 1 something like this right what is something like this right and then if i increase my scale you see the full wall is scaling right now i don't want something like this to happen the reason why something like this is happening is because the scaling point the point from which it is scaling is one point at zero 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 hence the scaling is happening from here for all the cubes for all the rectangles what alternatively i can do is there is a component called area area does two things right what area one of the things is that it will give you area of each and every panel right so this is the area of each and every panel right now right now all our panels are of equal size hence you are getting equal sizes equal areas right if your panels were of different sizes you will get get areas according to the size of each of them but what other thing we have is we have centroids over here you see these are the centroids of this these particular rectangles right the center point make sense right so what i'm doing is I'm, i'll connect my centroids to my center over here what it will do is now it will scale that particular rectangle from that particular centroid hence if what i can do is i can then have something like this happening seems good yes uh, there are two ways of doing it you can either right click over here and then there is an option over here which is known as disconnect or what you can do is you can click control and go in the reverse direction or the third is connect a new thing and the old one will delete by itself can i proceed further sure okay so now what i am doing now what i want to do is i want to divide these rectangles into four parts right now one of the things i can do is i can use partition list over here but because we have i can sorry uh, i can use partition list over here yes but the reason is because we have not learned data structure over here i don't want to complicate things right so what i'll do is i i'll try and use only things which we have already learned right and then we can do so what i'll do is i'll use split list over here so first what i'm doing is i'm connecting my list over here with split list i can divide my list into two parts right okay so what i want to do is over here i want to divide my list into two parts so i'll need to find an index the center number yes or no yep so now in order to do that i need to know how many total number of rectangles i am having right one of the ways is i can multiply 20 and 13 and that will give me total number of items right total number of rectangles the other thing is i can use a component which is known as list length what list length do does is if you connect any list to it it will give you the length so if i connect a panel over here right it's telling me that there are 260 items in your list right okay the reason why there are 260 items is because it's 20 into 13 right 260 items so it's working right 
Now, if I want to find the midpoint or the like the mid number, what I can do is I can do division. I can divide my list length by two, and that will give me the center number. Seems good. Now I can attach this over here to in my index and it will divide my list into two parts. Yep. There is one small thing that I don't want to miss out over here. See right now it's giving me a whole number. The reason why I'm having whole number is because my list over here, the list length was 260 which is an even number. What if I had an odd number? I would have decimal over here. Yep. Now if I have a decimal over here, there is no, like let's say if I had 130.5, there is no sense of splitting our list at 130.5 number, right? There is nothing like that particular item in your list. So what you, I usually like to do is, I, I usually like to round it off. So there is another component for that, which is known as round, right? So what round does is basically, it will round off that number for you. And I usually like to use the nearest, right? Everyone knows the difference between nearest floor and ceiling, right? Nearest is 0.5 se zada hai to plus 1, 0.5 se kam hai to minus 1. Floor is basically, it's 130.5, then it will take it as 130. Ceiling is, it, if it is 130.5, it will take it 131. Right, I'll use the nearest one and I'll connect it over here. So that I have two lists with me. Now if I want to check my list, what I can do is I can simply uh, take a BREP and connect it over here. And right now this is my list A and this is my list B. Seems good with everyone? I have divided my list into two parts. Done. Can I proceed further? Now see the list I'm having right now are very organized list, right? So this is the, this is the first let's say 130 items and this is the second 130 items, right? I don't want something like this. I want something random. I want basically a random selection. So what can I do over here? I have something over here which is known as jitter. What jitter does is basically it shuffles your list. Right, so the second item might get 77th item, the 77th might become 51th item and something like that, right? So the way you shuffle cards, it shuffles your lists. Make sense? Yes or no? This is known as jitter. Now what I will do over here is, I'll take this geometry, I'll pass it through jitter component and then I'll pass it through list over here. So in the middle, I want to just rearrange my list. I want to shuffle my list. Now over here, there is a value over here which is known as, it goes from zero to one. Right, so it will, uh, okay, let me draw and explain. So for example, let's say if you are having 10 circles, and if your jitter number over here is one, this can go and replace over here. This can go and replace over here. This can go and replace over here, something like that, right? But if your, let's say jitter number is 0.5, what will happen is, again, you have these many circles, but let's say at the max, this will go over here, this can go over here, this might come over here, something like that, right? So inter, like jittering will decrease. Am I making sense? Yes. So the list will not be completely shuffled. So for now, I'll just use jitter of one, which is the default thing. But just to make things clear, I'll arrange one over here. I'll connect one over here. And again, the seed value, there is nothing like truly random, right? That's the one thing that we have learned today. So what I'll do is, I'll, let's say I'll connect a number over here, which is 21, and I want a seed value of 21 to, for my thing. And now I am having the random rectangles, right? 
everyone's good with this much the totality will still be the full thing right but i have divided my list into random things like this and now if i if, if i change my seed value these patterns will change right so i can have as many patterns as i want seems good with everyone yes or no sure can i proceed further okay now what i'll do is i'll copy the same thing again copy paste the same thing again and now what will i do is i'll arrange i divide this list this first list list into two further parts and right now now the index for index what i'll do is i'll have this i'll use the same thing again right i'll have to use the same thing again but in this time my index this will change from this to this right i need to copy the list number also so right now for my second list just look on my screen for one minute and then you can do it on your own right so now what i am doing over here is i have this first list over here i'll take the list length of that i'll divide it by 2 take its rounding off and then i'll de further divide my list into two parts make sense yes or no and i'll do the same thing for the other one let's just copy the same thing again and then connect this over here and connect this over here and then i will have further divisions for this as well right i want all of you to quickly do this and then we can proceed if you have not understood something just let me know can we proceed yep okay so i have these four sets with me right and now what i am doing over here is in my rhino i have, i'll go to my properties panel and over here i'll add four layers right <coughs> so my panel i'll name my layer 1 as panel one panel underscore one i'll create another layer which i'll name it as panel underscore 2 panel underscore 3 and then panel underscore 4 seems good and i'll give different colors to these panels right one i can keep it as red this one i can keep it as let's say blue third one as green fourth one is let's say uh magenta right something like that and now what i will do is i'll bake them so what i will do is i'll bake them i'll bake the first one in the first layer right i can bake the second one in the second layer I can bake the third one in the third layer. I can bake the fourth one in the fourth layer, like this. And like this, I will have random patterns. Right. So over here you can apply different materials to different panels like this, right? And then let's say you don't want to work with colors, right? Color is very basic. So what you can do is you have these panels, you can extrude them, right? So let's say I'm extruding the first one. Uh, I have created my rectangle in Y Z plane, so I need to extrude in X direction, right? So I can do extrusions for all of them. Let's say extrusion of this. So what I can do is I can extrude the first one, let's say by twenty units, right? Like this. I can extrude the second one, let's say by hundred units. I can extrude the third one, let's say by seventy-eight units. and i can extrude the fourth one it let's say by 
right, something like this and then I can bake these I'll bake everything in default layer and group them so once you have divided your list what you can do different different operation on each of these subdivisions right so you will have something like this and if I see my if I turn my arctic mode on I will have some pattern like this right on my wall seems good everyone okay let me use the older script only and let's make an addition over there script I want all of you to copy the script into a new document right and delete everything after geometry after scaling component right so delete everything after scale component we also don't need all of these things this is the only thing that we need Is this much good with everyone? Right, this is the simple first script. Oh, I'm having some issues. I had issues last time also. Can I just share? Yes, yes. Of my yes, yes. Okay, okay. Everyone good till here? Right. Now, what I want to do is I'll go to my front view over here and I'll place a point over here. Right, somewhere randomly. Doesn't matter. I have deleted everything after scale. So I have this scale components over here. Right now what I want to do is I want to create a script in such a way that the points closer to this, so the rectangles closer to this should be scaled less. The ones that are further away from it should be scaled, should have a scale larger. Right. So what I will do in that case is, who will tell me, anyone who can guess, except Sanat, right? Sanat knows it, right? But um, uh, others, right? Logically, what I want to do is basically rectangles that are near to this point should be scaled less. And then the ones that are over here should be scaled more. How can I do that? So what I'm doing over here is I'm having these areas with me, right? The, what these areas do, do is typically they give me the center for the rectangle. Over here I can use a param over here which is known as point. And I can take this point from rhino to grasshopper. Right? I have taken this point into grasshopper and now what I am doing over here is I am calculating this distance. I am calculating the distance between these points, right? Uh, I am calculating the distance between these points and this one. Everyone's good with this much? Yes or no? Right. So if my if my rectangle is over here, so let's say if my rectangle, if this is the rectangle that I'm talking about, its center is here. So its and its distance d1 is. Then I'm taking uh -huh. this. Just one second, now, Amud. Just one second. This is the second rectangle I am having and this ka center is here, the so distance between the, this and this, let's keep it as D2. Now D1 is less than D2. Yes or no? Right. 
Now, can I use this d1 and d2 as a scaling factor? Yep. So what will happen is if I connect this over here, I can connect this distance over here as a factor and I'm having something like this. Yep. Right. Now what is happening over here is if I connect, see, just look on my screen for some time. I want everyone to look on my screen for some time. Right. What is happening is if I connect my panel over here and you need to understand this, right? Because there is one important topic that I'm going to introduce, right? So if I connect my panel over here, right? The distance between, let's say, the first point and the center over here is 2071, right? So the distances are huge, right? And if I use this as a scaling factor, of, of course, I'm getting very huge rectangle. Make sense? Yep. So what I'm doing over here is, first what I'll do is, I will divide these numbers by 1000 by 10,000 sorry because this is four digit numbers I want to divide it by thousand so I get something like zero point something right I don't want anything which is more than one so what I'll do is I'll divide this distances by this number and then I will have something like this seems good with everyone yes or no so what I was having was I was having the distances which were very huge right now I don't want to scale my rectangle with a factor of 3760 so what I did was I divided all the numbers like all the distances by a division factor of 10,000 so that I get everything as decimals so all numbers have divided by 1000 10,000 now what I can do over here is I can use this as a factor and then suddenly I have something like this are you seeing this everyone Yes or no? How many of you understood the concept? Raise your hands if you have understood the concept as to how it's working. It's it's working well, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, Adha, I just wanted to know mm -hmm. how do you import the points inside the grasshopper? Grasshopper and yes, so I used the param named point. Yes, so I just used a param over here, so right click, select one point, yeah. and then yeah. select the point from right now. And then you connected that to? To the distance component. So one of the point needs to be sent, right? And the other point is this one. Right. Doesn't matter, right? If one is on the top, other is on the down, other is down, because we are anyways calculating the distance between the two points. Yes, so I connected distance to division first because I want to have a small number so I divided it by 10,000 and then I connected it to the factor.
over here what i'm doing is i have, I have connected 10000 over here right and it's giving me different scales right if i decrease this number i will have bigger and bigger rectangles with me right obvious because my division factor is decreasing so the distance ka result will increase and it will replicate over here right okay now in grasshopper you have something which is known as rebound i need, i want all of you to look on my screen for like 2 minutes and then you can complete right there is something called remap now what remap does let's say you have a set a which is going from 0 5 uh, 15 20 30 35 and so forth till 100 right now i want to remap these numbers between 0 and 10 so what will happen is my 0 will remain 0 5 will become what will 5 become come on 0.5 right 10 will become 1 15 will become 1.5 20 will become 2 2.5 and this will go till 100 so like we we use scale right in plans and sections right when you are scaling something by a factor of 20 or something what you are doing is you are scaling numbers over here right you can also do remapping of these numbers between let's say 3 to 5 doesn't matter right then you will have something like 3 and then 3. Point, I mean, I need to do exact calculation but 3.15 then 3.6 and it will like, give you 100 points and then it goes till 5 over here is it making sense the formula for remap is max domain minus min domain uh, upon max d right something like this right you don't need to get into formulas right now but you need to understand how remap works right so let again just see on my screen for like two more minutes and then you can do this on your own i am having this huge distances with me right what i want to do over here is i want to remap these numbers so if i'll take my remap numbers component over here now the first thing it's asking for is i need to give it values that i want to remap right so i want to remap these distances the second thing you need to give is you need to connect a source domain source domain mane jo source hai यानी ये डिस्टेंस है उसका डोमेन क्या है सो व्हाट इज द मिनिमम एंड व्हाट इज द मैक्सिमम इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड मिनिमम एंड मैक्सिमम फ्रॉम अ सेट यू यूज समथिंग कॉल्ड बाउंड्स सो आई कनेक्ट माय डिस्टेंसेस ओवर हियर एंड इट गिव्स मी टू नंबर्स राइट ओवर हियर लेट्स सी आई विल कनेक्ट अ पैनल ओवर हियर एंड दिस गिव्स मी टू नंबर्स राइट सो 85.54 इज द मिनिमम इज द स्मॉलेस्ट डिस्टेंस and 4442 is the maximum distance i can connect my source domain over here and then i need to give it a target domain right so in order to give a target domain i'll have to construct a domain right so i'll construct a domain over here like this and i'll keep my start as let's say i want to start it from 0.2 right so minimum scaling will be 0.2 and maximum i want to go it till 0.8 so now if i see my mapped values over here you see the minimum th number will be 0.2 and it will always be from 0.2 to 0.8 make sense and then i can connect these mapped values to my factor over here and this is the minimum scaling right of point 2 that you have now the interesting thing over here is if i change my point my pattern will also change right because it's continuously checking out the patterns seems good right i want all of you to try this out and will it will leave it till here only right if you have doubts let me know
second point uh, i want all of you to create a facade like this right uh, triangles i am expecting them to be a little complex right now uh, if somebody knows you can always use lunch box it's very simple thing but yes avoid triangles if you are not understanding something just use simple rectangles like we have done today right you can use rectangles now rectangle in rectangle we had our rectangle i'll just show it so that it's easier for you and you are not stuck there okay so i have this surface is over here right if i want to extract their edges there is something over here which is known as b rep edges if i connect my b rep edges over here i will have my naked edges over here for my b rep right oh, give me a second so okay sorry this these are my surfaces if i connect my b rep over here i will have all these edges with me and then what i can do is so each rectangle will have four edges so what i need to do over here is i need to join them right and once i join them i can also offset them right let's say i'll, off, I'll offset it by a distance of 50 units so like this i can offset my edges seems good with everyone right now your task over here is to give different offsets like we have used different scaling with remap you can use different offsets with remap right Oh, I deleted that. Uh, I'll do it again. Uh, B rep edges, so that I get B rep edges, uh, and then I join them, so that I get a single curve, and then I offset them. Offset, so it, you can use this offset if you like. Okay, no more doubts. Can I then, in that case, end the session, or do you want to complete the script? It will anyways be there on the classroom, so you can always open it and check it out. Adnan, I have a question. Yes. Uh, when you selected the B rep edges, mm -hmm. you got edges of the individual rectangles. Yes. While right now, what I am getting is the entire wall surface. Uh, 
did you connect did you connect uh, sorry i made a mistake did you connect isotrim over here to b repositories connect isotrim connect isotrim with b repositories connect output from isotrim okay. to b repositories hmm. you'll still not get proper outs offsets uh of the curve i am aware of it but that is what you need to figure it out right on your own 